Hello, this is Patrick at 1CNC West, and what I'd like to do in this video is demonstrate how you can quickly create geometry for custom toolpath. In this example, let's say that we want to create some custom toolpath to machine this 3D fillet. So the first thing I suggest doing is create a separate layer, and of course you can name the layer anything that you'd like, and that way this layer is going to contain all this brand new geometry. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a piece of geometry for each pass that's going to be executed or performed on this 3D fillet. So to do this, head over to the command manager, go into your model tools, and let's use this option called extract an edge. Just take your cursor, and all we want to do is just select any one of the edges on the outside of that 3D fillet. Just left click, and then right hand mouse click. Very good. Now we do need to flatten this geometry and I think the easiest way to do that is to use Smart Projection. Smart Projection will take selected geometry and it will project it flat to a Z level. It can project it onto a construction plane and it can also project geometry onto a surface. We do need to select the geometry first so let's do that. Let's head up to the top menu and let's just use Select by Color. We're going to select this kind of a purple color here. We'll click OK and that looks good. And you can tell the geometry has been selected because it'll turn red. All right, let's head back over to the command manager. And inside of our model tools, we're going to use smart projection. Now to project to a Z level, make sure you've got Z position selected. And then just simply type in the Z level. For this, I have one inch, so we'll click OK. That looks very good. And you can see the geometry has now been projected up to Z of one inch. All right, let's turn our solid model layer off. We're going to hit the space bar twice, quickly go to a CAD view, and now let's create some offset geometry. And each one of those offsets is going to represent a different pass when machining that 3D fillet. All right, so let's head back over to the command manager. Now we're going to go into our shapes option, and let's use this feature called advanced offset. For this, I'm going to be using a 20 thousandths offset, and that's because I want my toolpath to step over 20 thousandths each time. And then side of arrow simply means that the offset is going to be placed on the arrow that I designate. Let me demonstrate. We're going to click OK, going to left click, and now you can see the arrow. So if I select the inside arrow, offset will be on the inside, outside arrow, offset on the outside. This has nothing to do with the direction of toolpath. It's simply just how we're going to create the offset and where the offsets are going to be. All right, I'm going to select this inside arrow, and then if I hit the F3 key on the keyboard, that selects the rest of the geometry, and sure enough, it creates our 20 thousandths offset. Now, I want 10 of these. We already have two, so when it says continue offsetting, I'm going to say, yes, that's going to be three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. And when we're finished, we can just click the no button. All right, now you can leave the geometry just like this. But what that means is that after each one of these passes, the tool's gonna wrap it up to clearance, wrap it over, wrap it, and then feed back down. I really wanna connect all of these so there's just one continuous tool path. So typically how I do that is let's create a line. In fact, I'm just going to grab that. In fact, let's change our line angle to how about 90 degrees, just like that. I always like making a horizontal line for this. I guess at the end of the day, it really doesn't matter whether it's horizontal or not, but it just seems that horizontal works good for me. So now that we have that, let's make another line. Let's use our parallel offset. I'm going to make this 10 thousandths, bring that up just about like that. All right, so we're going to connect all these, and here's how I do this. I'm going to hit the letter X on the keyboard to go into our scissor trim, and I'm just going to get rid of these lines right here, just so I have a gap. All right, now we no longer need these two horizontal lines, so I can hit the letter S on the keyboard, left click, left click, and then hit the delete key on the keyboard. Very good. So now I do have to think about the direction of toolpath. I want to climb cut around the perimeter of that 3D fillet, so I'm going to be moving in this direction. So the tool is going to move all the way around, and when it gets done, I want it to transition over to the next offset. So to do that, all we need to do is just create a connecting line. Just left click, left click, and when you're done, right hand mouse click. Let's do that again. Left click, left click, and right click. 
Now you want to make sure you see that little square as you're hovering over. That's going to confirm that you're at the end of the existing line. So wait till you see the square left click. Wait till you see the square left click and when you're done right click. All right, let's just repeat that same process here. All right, and that's just a left click, left click, right click, left click, left click, and then right click. And that's it. We're finished now. You can hit escape on the keyboard or you can right hand mouse click one more time. Oops, it looks like I forgot a couple lines there. Let's quickly put those in. There we go. All right, so there's our geometry and it's all been connected up. Let's turn our solid model layer back on. That's extremely important. That looks good. And let's head over to the command manager. We're going to go into our model tool paths and from there we're going to select custom finish. Now when CNC is giving us the opportunity to select this geometry three different ways. By layer, you can pick or you can use all. I like using the pick option. So let's click OK. And the reason why I like using pick is it helps me define the direction of cut. See I can pick here and cut from the inside out or I can select here and cut from the outside in. So I'm going to left click, left click the arrow, that's the direction and then hit the F3 key on the keyboard to select the rest of the geometry and then right hand mouse click. At this point all we need to do is just fill out the tool parameters. I'm going to up the RPM to let's say 5600. Feed rate, I'm going to slow that down just a little bit, maybe 35 inches a minute. Ball end mill, that all looks fine. 250 thousandths is fine. I'm going to change my holder to a half inch side lock. I think all that looks good. Let's click next on that. Our clearances look good. We'll click next on that. Engrave amount. I don't need to go any deeper. I want the tool to ride right on the face of the surface. So for engrave amount, make sure you have that set to zero. Now, if you want to leave material, in other words, if you want to make a rough pass and a finished pass, you could put a value here, but I'm not going to do that. This is going to be the finish pass. And then for surface tolerance, I'll just use the default of two tenths. Let's click next on that. And then as far as boundary type, using extents box is fine because the toolpath is going to be restricted to this geometry that we selected anyway. So you don't really need to worry about boundary type or tool placement position. We can leave those set to default. As far as the automatic Z offset, this is fine as long as the Z top is lower than our, remember our clearance was set to a half inch, as long as Z top is lower than that, you're going to be fine. And then Z bottom, I'm just going to leave the default in there. We really don't need to worry too much about this or the automatic XY offset. Let's click finish. Let one CNC generate the toolpath. And there we go. Let's zoom out just a little bit. Let's take our toolpath into preview. We'll quickly head over to the NC manager, right hand mouse click, select preview toolpath. And here we go. Here's our custom toolpath and it's using each one of those offsets as a separate pass when machining our 3D fillet. All right, that's it for this video. I hope it helped out. Thanks for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.